Well, how's the dissertation coming? Is it coming along? Uh, yeah, you know, I have, uh, I'm in the last year, so I have to wrap up everything hopefully by March. And there are so uh, too much to do, you know. Um, there is yeah. too much to do. There's too much to do. And uh, believe it or not, I need to record takeaways for all of my activity in the day because I cannot, yeah. you know, keep them in my mind. Too much to do. Wow. That sounds intense. Um, well, good luck. Sorry to hear that. It sounds stressful. Um, yeah, okay. And we've also got Wilson. How's it going? Okay, I'm fine. Nice. Ready for the next class. <laughs> Woo! Um, Wilson, do you have any plans for the week? Are you going to be do doing anything exciting? No, not exciting. Preparing for the next uh, holiday. We're going to have another holiday on 20th. So I'm, I'm planning to travel to the beach, and that will be a very nice weekend because planning to go out. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully it works out really well. Um, and we've also got maybe Julieta. You're back. Maybe. Are you there? Almost. Hey. I can I hear you know. now. And I'm doing well still. Thanks. Uh, and so, yeah, what are your plans for the week? Do you have anything going on? No, I haven't had anything. Okay. Okay. Um, so kind of what comes up. And do, do, do. Edson, how's it going? Hello. Good. And you? Doing well. Nice to see you again. And Edson, how's your weekend? Good, you're relaxing, sleeping all day long. Oh no, sleeping all day long. <laughs> oh, come on, Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I guess it is so Sunday. So you need to relax, because we, you know, week is week day. Mm. Work and studying. Yeah, I don't know, sleeping though, sleeping all day. It's yeah. Probably, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's got its benefits, I suppose. Um, <laughs> all right, cool. And Javier, Javier, how's it going? Fine, thank you. Okay. okay. Here. And what about you? Any plans for the week? Any plans for the week? No, just working and that's it, yeah, mainly. So, yeah. Okay. Working. That's a good plan, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and there's and so much part. And, uh, Sorry? Do so much part, yeah, but mainly working. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, nice. Keep up the good work, I guess. Um, I think we're good. Let's get started with the reading. Um, not sure if you guys ever read The Sunless Earth, which is really funny. Um, there's also one about growth rate. Does anybody have any opinion, anything that they'd rather read about growth rates or uh, if the Earth did not have a sun? I vote for if the Earth didn't have a sun. Ah, okay. And Julieta just says she just read The Sunless Earth. Um, okay. So we were... Hmm, yeah. Okay, anybody else have any input now that we're kind of like one in one, I suppose? Uh, it's okay f for me to oh, okay. to read the other okay. one. Okay, yeah, let's do that just so we're not doing the same reading. Um, and let's start with Mariam. Can you read the title and the question? Um, yes. Uh, gross rate. What hate would humans reach if we kept growing through our whole development period, that is till late teens, early 20s, at the same pace as we did during our first months, Maria? Good. Okay, really nice job with height. Height. Ah, height. Yeah. Okay. Height. And let's have... Wilson, can you read the first little paragraph? Okay. Tall. 
According to the National Center of Health Statistics, the average newborn's height length is approximately uh, point, 0 0.5 meters, or a quarter of diameter of the death start thermal exhaust port. <laughs> um, yeah, so he's making a joke about mm. babies and comparing it to the thermal exhaust port um, of the Death Star in Star Wars, um, which, you know, doesn't really make any sense. But uh, any questions so far? Okay. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really make sense. Uh, so let's have um, Anna Carolina. Can you read the next part? From this initial, uh, sorry, from this initial height of the 0 0.5 meters, they grow to about 1.5 or 2 meters. Yeah. <clears throat> next little part. Babies grow. <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> Babies grow fastest right after they're born. During their first month, infants grow about 4.5, uh, 4.4, sorry, centimeters, ten times the their growth rate during their early teenage years. Sorry about my pronunciation. You did a good job. Centimeters, maybe centimeters. Centimeters. Yeah, and that's one of those words where we kind of can swallow the T, so centimeters. Um, but yeah, that was good. Um, any questions here? I didn't okay. see. No. Get the second <clears throat> paragraph. Uh, so babies just grow the fastest. It's like as far as no, humans? No. The, the paragraph will sound right. Oh, about the Death Star? Um, so it's just saying that like babies on average are half a meter. Um, and then he's just saying, or they're a quarter of the diameter of the Death Star thermal exhaust port, uh, which I, I believe is just a reference to Star Wars that doesn't, I mean, it it's a non sequitur, so it doesn't really make sense. But there it is. Does that do you under, do you understand now to some extent? Okay. Yeah, so it doesn't really make sense. It's just why not reference Star Wars when you can? Um Okay, and then let's have Edson, can you read the next little sentence? In Maria's scenario. This growth rate continue, continues until about age 20. Good. And the next one? Let's follow that child's growth over the years. By its, by the, by its first birthday, the baby would be a meter long. Mm -hmm. At two years and three months, the kid would reach, reach 169 centimeters and 5 pounds 7 I don't remember that's 5 feet 7 inches or 5 7, seven inches 5 feet 5 feet 7 inches 7 inches the average adult uh, height is in the US Okay, the average adult height in the U.S. The average adult height in the U.S. Okay, good. Um, yeah, and so with five foot seven inches, we can also say five seven. That's the common way of saying it. Five seven. Um, okay, and then let's have Julieta. Can you read the next part? By age three. We have a 2.08 meter, 610 taller than taller than Darth Vader. I find your lack of faith disturbing. I find the bug, <laughs> and much taller than Yoda. 
kingdom. By age four, the, chi the child will be nearly nine feet tall, able to dunk a baseball with a, a basketball without jumping. Nice. And a seven eight Harlem Globetrotters player can almost dunk without jumping, so the threshold of a clear no jump dunk is probably about eight feet. Nice. And, okay, Javier, the threshold. Um, so, like, the limit, so where it changes from possible to impossible. Does that make sense, Anna Carolina? Um, do you mind to repeat the pronunciation again? Threshold? Threshold. Thank yeah, you. Threshold. Any other questions? Okay, and let's have maybe Javier. Can you read the next part? A few months later, the kid would surpass Robert Wadlow to become the tallest human in history. At age five, the child. Oh, sorry. Whoop. At age five, the child would be p meters tall, then uh, inches and four. I don't know. Okay, ten, 10 feet, 4 inches. Ah, okay, 10 feet, 4 inches, yeah. At age 5, the child would be pi meters tall. Um, yeah, so um, does anybody know what pi? It's 3.14. Ah, 3.14. Ah, uh, good. And so the threshold, again, is the limit. Um... I wish I could draw on this. <laughs> I am maybe a little bit too reliant on that. Uh, so think about like a limit in a house. The doorway is what we call the threshold. So it's the place where you start, where you stop being in the house and you enter the outside. And so the threshold is like that limit. So eight feet is the threshold for the no jump dunk. It's like the limit, the lower limit, the place between. It's not the distance between the floor and the ceiling, no. It's it's the limit. So if we're talking about a threshold, it's just a doorway. And so the threshold is the bottom of the doorway. So it's like that, just that space. This is a threshold. Um, yeah, uh, so it's meant to hold threshing inside your house, um, which, yeah, that's all it is. But that's the threshold, Anna Carolina, so it's just the limit. Um, yeah, does that make sense? Yes, the step that you, that you have in front of your, your house. Yeah, and so when you reach a threshold, you're like, reaching a change in something. So you're changing from inside to outside. Once you reach the threshold, it's like that space right on the line of the change. So the threshold for dunking is eight feet tall. So, you know, that's the basic height that you have to have to be able to put the ball in the basket without jumping. Does that make sense? Yes, no, it does. Okay. Uh... Good. And, yeah. And I think that was M Miriam who was yes. reading. Yeah, can you keep reading? Yes, sure. At age seven, the child would be 4.2 meters tall, able to stare down a T-Rex <laughs> kitty. <laughs> By age 10, the child would be 5.8 meters tall, 19 feet. If we assume these giants are proportion like adult humans, this kind would weigh over a metric. This kid would weigh over a metric ton. Yeah, this kid would weigh over a metric ton. Weigh over a metric ton. 
Yeah, and does anybody know what a metric ton is? No. Any other ideas? No. Can elevated to third power. What a what a hundred ton? Maybe a metric. Ton. It's a thousand kilograms. A thousand. <laughs> A thousand kilograms. Yeah. So, just really heavy. Um, okay. And good. Questions? Okay. And Wilson, can you read this next little paragraph? Okay. Actual humans wouldn't be able to grow to such height. Thanks to the square cube law, one, our bones would be too thin to support our weight and our hearts would be unable to pump blood around our bodies. Continue? Yeah. Even breathing would be difficult. We might be able to position ourselves to keep our airways open, but the breath in a lung full of air would require very high airflow rates. We'd experience tornado winds all the way down our airways. <laughs> yeah, which is well, crazy. Yeah. Um, um, good. Any questions here? L lung lung full. Breathe in oh. a lung full of air. So your lungs are the organs in your chest that breathe? So they take in oxygen and they release oxygen? Or they release carbon dioxide, really? Um, but yeah, so your lungs are the organs that breathe, and so a lung full is like when you fill up your lungs with air. Does that make sense, Wilson? Okay, okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Anna Carolina, can you read the next bit? Our giant would reach a final high of between 10 and 12 meters, assuming growth tapered off around age 20. At that high, they'd be able to comfortably dunk a basketball while keeping one hand on, on the court outside of outside the three-point line. Yeah. A creative uh, NBA two kilograms. Marty, show us what that player might look like. Yeah, and I am kind of interested. Um, a creative NBA 2K3 mod. Can you repeat that? Creative NBA 2K3 mod. Yeah, so a mod is a modification. Okay. Um, and so... Apparently, this is this <laughs> the picture. Does that make sense <laughs> to everybody? The size of this player. Is it real? No. No, no. I mean, it's just it's a modification for a, a game, a video game. But <laughs> it's kind of hilarious. Um, yeah. Anyways, that's it. Uh, good. And let's have Julieta. Can you read the next two bits? In addition to the unsurmountable health problems, someone with the, this rapid growth rate will face another hardship. To ride roller coasters, you have to be above a certain minimum height. height. However, they generally also have a maximum height. You must be you must be at least this tall to ride. I wish I was a little bit taller, but not taller than this. Yeah, okay, so there's a minimum and a maximum. Can you repeat insurmountable? Insurmountable. Yeah, insurmountable health problems. Um, what does that mean, insurmountable health problems? That you cannot overpass. You cannot um, yeah. go over. Yeah, so you can't go around these problems. They are too big. So y you would be very dead. Um, okay. And Javier, can you read the next part? 
Bizarro a coaster at Six Flags New England has a minimum weight of 137 centimeters per feet 6 inches, a maximum weight of 193 centimeters 6 feet and 4 inches. Our child would be tall enough to ride Pizarro at age 2 and too tall by age 3. The coaster reading window would last only 387 days. It's sad, truth, roller coasters just aren't for everyone. Okay, let's look at height. Can you repeat a minimum height? A uh, minimum height. Height, yeah, and their coaster riding window. Their coaster riding window. Their coaster riding window. Nice. Okay. And that is it. <laughs> you had a sign. Um, okay. Any questions here? No. Okay. Um, so let's check out this one. Um, sorry, Julieta, but yeah, hopefully it's interesting the second time as well as the first time. Uh, Mariam, can you read the title and the question and maybe the first sentence? Um, yes. Sunless Earth. What would happen to the Earth if the sun suddenly switch off? Many, many readers. This is probably the single, single mo most popular question submitted to the what if. Yeah, and can you repeat switched? Switched. Uh, switched. Switched. Good. Good. Switched. Go. And, okay, yeah. Other than that, good. And let's have Wilson. Can you read the next little part? Yes. Part of why I haven't answered it is that it has been answered already. A Google search for what if the sun went out turned up a lot of excellent articles truthfully analyzing the situation. Let's look at turns. Turns up. Okay. Yeah, turns up and thoroughly. Ah. Sorry? Thoroughly. Thoroughly. Well, where is the word? Thoroughly. Thoroughly. Ah, ter okay. Thoroughly. 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 Okay. Okay. Good. Questions? I have a question. Um, what's different between turn turn up and turn out? Is that the uh, same? Not, mm, not really. So, how did it turn out? Is like turn out a lot of excellent articles. You could turn out a lot of excellent articles. That wouldn't be like more like producing. Like if you're turning out a lot of excellent articles, you're writing them. So, turn out excellent articles, you write the articles. Uh, turns up a bunch of excellent articles, it's like they appear nice. when you search. Um, so, yeah, a little bit different. Also, you could say, like, how did it turn out? It's like, how did it happen? Like, what was the final result? Make sense? Yes, thank you very much. Okay. And let's have Anna Carolina. Can you read the next little paragraph? However, since my recent articles on sunsets, the rate of submission of this question has risen even further, so I've decided to do my best to answer it. If the sun went out. <laughs> and can you read the comic? Can you also read the comic? I cannot see. Figure one? Figure one. The sun going out. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is figure one, the sun going out. And let's have... Julieta, can you read this next little paragraph? We won't, we won't worry about exactly how it happens. 
we'll just assume we figure out a way to fast forward the sun through its evolution so that it becomes a cold inert sphere. What will, will the consequences of be for, for, be for us here on Earth? What would the consequences be for us here on Earth? What will the consequences be for us here on Earth? Yeah, there you go. And... Okay, good. Maybe... Javier, can you read until wires? From let's okay, let's look at uh, at a few reduced risk of solar flares in 1859. A massive solar flare and geomagnetic storm hit the earth. Magnetic magnetic storms induce electric currents in wires. And unfortunately for us, by 1859 we had wrapped the earth in telegraph wires good and ah uh, man okay so this is a little bit different and good questions here what is flare solar flares does anybody know what a solar flare is uh, I, s I think those um, I don't know uh, is it like some? I cannot explain. Explosion? Solar explosion? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so if we're looking at solar flares, <coughs> excuse me, they look like this. They're like explosions in the sun. They send lots of like energy towards out out from the the sun. Really, did it make sense? Really. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So those are all solar flares. Solar flares. Uh huh. And yeah, it's just intense. Um, okay. Any other questions? Okay. And let's have Mariam. Can you read the next part? Uh, yes. The. The storm caused uh, powerful currents in those wires, knocking out communications, and in some cases causing telegraph equipment to catch fire. Since 1859, we've wrapped the uh, wrapped the earth in a lot of more wire. If yeah. the 1859 a storm hit us today. The Department of Homeland Security estimates the economic damage to the U.S. alone would be several trillion, trillion dollar. Okay, good. Let's stop there. Let's look at security. 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 Yeah, and then estimates. Estimates. Uh-huh. And maybe economic. Economic, 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 yeah, damage. Okay, and let's have Wilson, can you read the rest of this? Okay, starting at uh, more, more, okay, more than every hurricane which has ever hit the U.S. combined. If the sun went out, this thread would be eliminated. <laughs> Okay. Uh, continue. Improved satellite yeah. service. When a communication satellite passes in front of the sun, the sun can drown out the satellite's radio signal, causing an interruption in service. The okay. activation of the sun. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's look at interruption. Interruption. Uh, interruption. Interruption. Um, Good. Any questions here? No. Okay. Um, and let's have Anna Carolina. Can you read the next bit? <clears throat> Deactivating the sun would solve this problem. Better astronomy. Without the sun, 
ground-based observatories would be able to operate around the clock. The cooler air would create less atmospheric noise, which would reduce the load on adaptive optics systems and allow for sharper images. <laughs> okay, good. Um, based. Based. Yeah, okay. And I think we're good. Um, any questions here? No. Okay. And Julieta, can you read the next part? Stable dust. Without sunlight, there will be no pointing Robertson drag, which means we will finally be able to place dust into a stable orbit around the sun without the orbit decaying. I'm not sure whether anyone wants wants to do that, but you never know. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so that was well said. I don't really, you know, know exactly what he's talking about. Um, if you're interested in reading about pointing Roberts and Drag, uh, I'm sure you could find out. But any questions here? The king? What is Orbitz? Orbitz, the king. Okay, so when something decays, it falls apart, so it comes undone. Um, and so what's happening is that, um, yeah, the the orbit's decaying. It just means that, you know, the the circling around the sun would eventually stop because of the energy that the sun is like releasing. It would affect the dust and kind of destroy it. It would decay the orbit. Does that make sense? Yes, okay. Okay. Um, any other questions? Okay. Get rid of the sun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and shoot. That was Julieta who just read that. And so Javier, can you read the next one? The red Use infrastructure costs. The Department of Transportation estimates that it would cost 20 billion per year over the next 20 years to repair and maintain all U.S. Bridge, bridges. Most U.S. bridges are over water. Without the sun, we could save money by simply driving on a strip Ooh, sorry. Of, of asphalt laid across the ice. Okay, let's look at asphalt. 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 Uh-huh. And maintain. Maintain. And infrastructure. 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 Uh, Good. Uh, so reduce the infrastructure costs. Reduce the infrastructure costs. <laughs> Good. Um, and so, yeah, so no bridges, no other types of bridges, other types of bridges, no ramps, <laughs> no loop-de-loops, just straight asphalt. Um, yeah, that was funny. Uh, and Mariam, can you read the next part? Uh, yes. Cheaper trade. Time zones make trade more expensive. It's harder to do business with someone if their office hours don't overlap with yours. If the sun went out, it would eliminate the need for time zones, allowing us to switch to UTC and give a boost to the global economy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> good. Um, good. Questions here? Overlap. Overlap is to, like, layer almost. So, if you have two pieces of paper, one piece of paper would like overlap. It is on top of the other paper. Um, so yeah, if you're looking, mm, overlapping. 
So these, this is like an overlapping picture. So the green overlaps, the yellow overlaps, the red overlaps, the blue. Make sense? Yes. Okay, so overlapping is just, you know, going over. So, yeah. Hopefully that makes sense. Any other questions? Okay, and I keep losing my place. Uh, I think we're with Wilson. Can you read the next part? Yeah. Okay, safer children. According to the North Dakota Department of Health, babies younger than six months should be kept out of direct sunlight. Without sunlight, our children would be safer. <laughs> yeah, <I guess. laughs> yes. um, yeah, so no sunburns and stuff. Um, okay, really good pronunciation. And let's have Anna Carolina, the next one. Safer combat pilot. Many people sneeze when exposed to bright sunlight. The reasons for this reflex are unknown. And it may pose a danger to fighter pilots during flight. If the sun went dark, it would mitigate this danger to our pilots. Yeah, mitigate. Does anybody know what mitigate means? To be kind of mild. To be what? Mm, mild. Yeah, it's like to reduce, mitigate. Um, yeah. It's like to lessen the force of, or like to reduce. Yeah. Uh, and pose. Uh, it's like threat, threaten, or like act as. It's like to pose would be to act as a danger. Um, does that make sense? Um, so a pose is like a way of standing too. So like a model will pose. Um, but also, if you're like posing a threat, it's like you're acting like a threat. Does I uh, hopefully that makes some sense? Um, yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Adela, welcome to class. How's it going? I'm fine, thanks, and you? Okay. Um, doing well, thanks. And let's have Julieta. Can you read the first part? Safer parsnip. Wild parsnip is a surprisingly nasty plant. Its leaves contain chemicals called purocumarins, mm -hmm. which can be absorbed by human skin without causing symptoms at first. Okay, and maybe one more sentence. However, when the skin is then exposed to sunlight, even days or week later, the furocumarins cause a nasty chemical burn. Nice. Any questions so far? What's a pars parsnip? Parsnip is a type of plant. Um, let's look at parsnip. Do, do, do. Ah, man. So these are parsnip roots. Um, kind of look like carrots, but the parsnip is the top of it. Um, yeah, I think wild parsnip is a little bit different. Um, so yeah, this is kind of what parsnip looks like in the oh, wild. I eat the stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, and let's have Javier. Can you read the rest of this bit? This is called Phytophotodermatitis. A darknet sun would liberate us from the parsnip threat. <laughs> A darkened. Okay. Uh, Hiking tip: What do you, uh, sorry, what to do if you come across wild parsnip? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> okay, good. And maybe one more. 
in conclusion, if, if the sun went out, we would see a variety of benefits across many areas of our lives. Uh, let's look at variety. 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 Yeah, we would see a variety of benefits. Variety of benefits. Good. And <laughs> let's have Mariam. Can you read the rest of this? Are there any downsides to this scenario? Scenario, we would all freeze and die. Humans, 2000 BCE, 2013. 200,000 BCE. 200,000 BC. In to 2013, maybe we shouldn't have ex ex uh, extinguished the sun. <laughs> Good. Maybe we shouldn't have ex extinguished. Can you repeat How extinguished? Ex ex extinguish the sun. Ex extinguish the sun. Yeah. Yeah, extinguished. Good. English. And how do you uh, read the like R point I P humans? You could say rip or rest in peace. Uh -huh. Rest in peace. Okay. Uh huh. Rest in peace. Yeah. Um, and, and BCA, BC, what is before? Uh, before the common era. Uh, before the common era. Yeah. So BCE. Um, yeah. Any other questions? OK. Uh, and so we are a little bit early. Let's, um, we could go and try to see one more. Um, let's see if we've got a short one. Um, doo -doo -doo. Restraining an airplane might be a good one. Um, OK. Uh, if anybody sees something that they're interested in, too, maybe the loneliest human. Guess. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm kind of interested in what the question is. Um, yeah, and Yahub, Yahub, how's it going? Hey. Hey. Uh, how are you? Thank you. I'm fine. Okay. Nice. And Yahub. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Actually, my name is Hadi. I switched my account and uh, it's another account. My uh, my name is Hadi. Hadi. Yes. Hadi with a D or with a G? With a D. Hadi. Hadi. Okay. Nice to meet you, Hadi. Um, nice to meet you too. Okay. Perfect. You've come close to the end of class, but um, yeah, welcome and hopefully get to do a little bit of talking. Um, I think Wilson, can you read the title and the question? Okay, loneliest human. Human, human, that's that. What is the furthest of one human being has ever been from every other living person? Were they lonely? Good, and let's have, yeah, can you actually read the next little part? Okay. It's hard to know for sure. Continue? Yeah. Um, yeah. Read it until this bit. Until this. Okay. The most likely suspect are the six Apollo Command Module pilots who stayed in lunar orbit during a moon landing. Good. And let's look at command. Command module. Command module. Command module. Okay. And I think that was good. Uh, maybe, Adela, can you read the names in the next paragraph? Uh, yes, Mike Collins, Dick Gordon, Stu Rusa, Old Warden, Ken Mattingly, and Ron Evans. Yeah, and uh, each, yeah. Ah, sorry. Each of these astronauts stay alone in the com command module uh, while two other astronauts uh, land on the moon at the highest point in the or orbit orbit they were about uh, 3000 
585 kilometer from their fellow astronaut, astronaut. Fellow. Fellow, fellow, fellow sorry. Astronaut. And kilometers. Kilometers. Yeah, kilometers. Um, and the command module? Command module? Yeah, okay. And questions here? Okay, and so the third astronaut, and then the lander, and the two astronauts. Um, <laughs> okay, and <laughs> so does anybody have any questions here so far? What does sound stage mean? A sound stage. So because there is a theory that the moon landings were faked, that it was a sound stage, it was just like made up, it was a pretend. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a straight place. And so these are the astronauts on the moon being like, oh yeah, definitely a sound stage, like this is definitely not the moon. Um, okay. it's, a, it's a joke about the conspiracy theory about the moon landings. Um, okay, and what was I going to say? Uh, oh, uh, so. There's a text that you guys cannot see that says, from another point of view, this was the farthest the rest of humanity has ever managed to get from those jerk astronauts, um, which is just a little joke. Hopefully that you find funny. Uh, and let's have Anna Carolina, can you read the next part and maybe the first part of the next one? You'd think astronauts would have a lock on this category, but it's not so cut and dry. There are a few other candidates who come pretty close. Nice. And... Polynesians. Mm -hmm. you, you thought... Okay. It's hard to, to get 3,585 kilometers because of the curve of the Earth, you actually have to go 3,619 kilometers ac across the surface to qualify from a, a, a from, from, <clears throat> gosh, from a permanently in, inhabited place. The Polynesians, who were the first humans to spread across the Pacific might have managed it, but this would have required a lone sailor to travel awfully far ahead of everyone else. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Awfully far. Maybe can you repeat awfully far? Awfully far? Good. I, I struggle in the ad for... Sorry. No worries. It's okay, you did a good job. And Julieta, can you read the next part? It may have happened, perhaps by accident, when someone was carried far from their group by a storm, but we are unlikely to ever know for sure. Once the Pacific was colonized, it got a lot harder to find regions on Earth's surf surface where someone could achieve 3,585 kilometers isolation. Now that the Antarctic continent has a permanent population of the researchers, it's almost certainly impossible. Good. Okay. Um, that sounded great. Questions here, guys. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Uh, Javier, can you read this first part? Javier? Antarctic explorers. During the period of Antarctic exploration, a few people have come close to beating the astronauts. And it's possible one of them actually holds the record. One person who came very close was Robert Scott. Okay, and maybe the next sentence. One more sentence. Yeah, okay. Robert Falcon Scott was a British explorer 
who met a tragic end. Good. Okay. And questions here? Okay, good. And Mariam, can you read the next paragraph? Yes. Scott's expedition reached the South Pole in 1911, only to discover that Norwegian explorer Ronald Amundsen had beaten him there by several months. The dejected Scott and his companions began their trek back the coast but they are they all died while crossing the Ross Ice Shelf. Yeah, but they all died while crossing the Ross Ice Shelf. Um Roald Amundsen 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 Roald Amundsen Amundsen Amundsen. Good. It's a tough one. Um but yeah, good. Um Okay, and questions. Deject is Scott. The dejected Scott. Dejected is like miserable, sad. Miserable, okay. Yeah. Okay. And let's have uh, Wilson. Can you read the next one? Yes. And the last surviving expedition member would have been briefly one of the most isolated people on Earth. Uh, Amundsen's expedition had left the continent by by them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And do do do. Keep going. However, he whoever he was was still within three thousand five hundred eighty five kilometers of a number of humans, including some other Antarctic explorer outposts as well as the Maori on Rakura, the Stewart Island in New Zealand. Nice, okay. And let's have, I think that was good. Uh, Adela, can you read the next paragraph? <coughs> there are plenty of other candidates. Uh, Pierre-François Perron, a French sailor, says he was marooned, marooned on Isle uh, Amsterdam in the South Earth Indian Ocean. If so, uh, he came close to beating the astronaut, but he wasn't quite far enough uh, from Mauritius. Uh, so where Western, Western Australia on the edge uh, of Madagascar to qualify. Okay. Um, let's look at Southern. Southern. And marooned. Mm. Who, uh, maroon. Yeah, marooned. It's like abandoned. Maroon. Marooned is abandoned. Maroon. Um, okay. Good. And uh, Anna Carolina, the next one. What does marooned? Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's abandoned. Marooned is like abandoned, or left I, left alone. So if you're marooned on an island, oh, you're okay. left alone on an island. Okay, so no we'll probably never know for sure. It's possible that some ship wrecked, 18th century sailor drifting in a lifeboat in the southern ocean holds the title of most isolated human. However, until more some clear piece of historical historic evidence pops up, I think the six Apollo astronauts have a pretty good claim. Nice. Um, and Julieta, can you read this next part? Which brings us to the second part of Brian's question, were they lonely? Loneliness. After returning to Earth, to Earth, Apollo 11 command module pilot Michael Lynn said he, he did not feel at all lonely. He wrote about the experience in his book, 
carrying the fire in Osimov's journeys. Good. Um, and hmm. so maybe Javier can read the next part. Far from feeling lonely or abandoned, I feel very much a part of what is taking place on the lunar surface. I don't mean to deny a feeling of solitude. It is there reinforced by the fact that radio contact with the Earth abruptly cuts off at the instant I disappear behind the moon. And abruptly. Good. I think that sounded good. And maybe, Mariam, can you read the next little paragraph? Uh, yes. I'm alone now, truly alone, and absolutely isolated from any known life. I'm it. If a count were taken, the score would be 3 billion plus 2 over on the other side of the moon, and 1 plus God knows what on this side. <laughs> All... Um, Keep it up? Uh, yeah, that next sentence, maybe. Uh, all uh, warden, the Apollo 15 command module pilot even enjoyed the experience. Enjoyed the experience. Good. And... BBC. Yeah, let's... um. Hmm. Maybe, Wilson, can you read that last paragraph? Yes. There is a thing about being alone and there is a thing about being lonely. And they are two different things. I was alone, but I was not lonely. My background was a fighter pilot in the Air Force, then as a test pilot, and that was mostly in fighter airplanes. So I was very used to being my to being by myself. I truly enjoy it. I didn't have a talk to Dave and Jim anymore. On the back side of the moon, I didn't even have to talk to Houston, and that was the best part of the flight. Good. And let's have Adela. Can you finish? Introverts understand the loneliest human in, his, in history was just happy to have a few minutes of peace and quiet. <laughs> yeah, finally. Um, <laughs> Okay, good. And that's it. Uh, thank you guys for coming into class. I uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, and hopefully I'll see you guys again soon. And thanks again. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good, have a good one.